Uh, tonight we are focused on the opioid issue that is affecting our community. With every heart-wrenching story, with every social media memorial, with every funeral of someone who died way too young, our community collectively grieves. Tonight is one of the ways that our community is collectively driving a stake in the ground and saying enough is enough. Yet, we cannot do it all alone. No single government entity represented here tonight can make a lasting difference needed by itself. In order to make a systemic change, we must be just that, a system. A system that works together, that finds solutions together, and that will ultimately see this horrible scourge on our society conquered together. We are grateful for the leadership of those elected officials who are in the room tonight, some of who will be sharing some words later this evening. However, government officials cannot do it alone. The opioid issue will not be solved by yet another government program with a flashy title. It will not be solved, or it will only be solved as the community rises up, bands together, and works without regard to who gets the credit. That's why we are honored tonight to have A.J. Serafini with the Pool of Law Group, as well as Bruce Pool, who will be here to share a little bit about the national litigation that the county and the cities are joining. However, before he comes, I've asked Re uh, retired State Police Major James Piles to come up and to set a frame for this discussion to lend his expertise regarding this issue. Welcome, Mr. Piles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Allegheny College, Maryland, welcome. Retired Major with the Maryland State Police. Again, I've asked to set a tone. As the opioid epidemic created the heroin epidemic, the Federal Center for Disease Control and Prevention says that 75% of today's heroin addiction, 75% of people today walking the street started with prescription opioids. As a major with the Maryland State Police, I was the lead on the heroin and the opioid epidemic. They said, Jimmy, give us a plan. My plan is prevention, enforcement, awareness, prevention. The Maryland State Police was the first state police agency in the United States to equip our troopers with Narcan or Loxone. So troopers in Maryland are saving lives before any trooper in the United States ever saved a life. Enforcement. We will never arrest around this problem. Two and a half years we tried. We made over 4,000 drug arrests. We seized over 80,000 grams of heroin. We seized over 18,000 Oxycontin and hydrocodone bills. Number three, awareness. I have traveled this state from Garrett County to Cecil County to the Convention Center in Ocean City, Maryland, talking to tens of thousands of people on heroin addiction. It is Jimmy Paul's belief 95% of people addicted today, it starts with prescription opioids. I disagree with the Federal Center for Disease Control and Prevention that says 75% prescription opioids to heroin. What I've seen, the thousands I've talked to addicted to heroin, it starts with prescription opioids. <clears throat> Drug awareness. Individuals in our community are dying because of a lack of knowledge. On February 24, 2015, I stood on the sec uh, second floor of the State House in Annapolis with Governor Hogan, Lieutenant Governor, and many others. Governor Hogan signed two executive orders to deal with and tackle the heroin opioid epidemic. Keep in mind, Governor Hogan was in the office for four weeks, but he signed two executive orders to deal with and tackle the heroin opioid epidemic. The governor said, you know, Lieutenant Governor and I traveled the campaign trail. We would sit down with community leaders in every county, which are not my problem, expecting your budgets and potholes every county, every community. It was a heroin opioid epidemic. I watched the governor get emotional talking about losing a loved one to an overdose death. The governor said, you know, from 2010 to 2013 in Maryland, we had a 95% increase in overdose deaths. In 2014 in Maryland, we had 1,041 total overdose deaths. What do I mean by total overdose deaths? That's alcohol, that's heroin, that's fentanyl, that's cocaine, that's prescription. In 2015, we had 1,259 deaths. 2016, we had 2,089. 2017, the numbers you see, is for the first nine months of this year, 1,705. I want to draw your attention to the number of opioid-related deaths. Of the 2000, in, in 2014, the 1,041 deaths, 888 was opioid-related. Only 153 deaths were not opioid-related. What do I mean by opioid? I mean prescription meds, I mean heroin, I mean fentanyl, that's opioid related. When you look at 2015, we had 170 deaths that 
were not opioid related throughout the state. 2016, only 233 deaths that were not opioid related. 2017, 204 deaths the first nine months of, of last year that were not opioid related. Where do we stand in Allegheny County? This is busy. But in 2014, I want you to look at out of 12 total deaths, 12 total alcohol, heroin, cocaine, prescription meds, then only one death was opioid related. Out of 22 deaths in Allegheny County in 2015, two were not opioid related. 2016, 59 deaths, four were not opioid related. 2017, out of 31 deaths, two deaths were not opioid related. Is the opioid epidemic or the heroin epidemic? Everything you're seeing for crime, 90% of everything is drug driven. Your, your home invasions, your cover of thefts, your, your, your four robberies in 12 hours, everything is drug driven. I don't care if I'm here today, I'm in Annapolis tomorrow, I'm in Cecil County the following day, 90% 90, 90 of the crime is drug driven. What, how, what's the opioid epidemic on the economic academic, uh, epidemic? Allegheny County has approximately 70,000 people. Let's say we only have 200 people dope sick. Dope sick is how individuals talk about each other addicted to heroin. Let's say we only have 200 people dope sick, that 75 to 95% of those people start prescription opioids. Economic impact on Allegheny County. If you have 200 people sick with heroin, the average habit's a gram a day. That's $100 a day. If you have 200 people sick, 100 bucks a day, that's $20,000 a day going to heroin Allegheny County. That's $600,000 a month on the heroin in Allegheny County. That's $7.2 million a year on the heroin in Allegheny County. Is the opioid epidemic or the heroin epidemic? What's it like to be dope sick? Dope sick again, you're sick with heroin and eat it every day, multiple times a day. If I have Jonathan standing next to me and Jonathan's addicted to heroin, and I introduce you to Jonathan and Jonathan's leading the building, and I say, Jonathan, don't use heroin today. And I look at each and every one of you and say, don't use heroin today, or excuse me, don't breathe today, don't breathe tomorrow, don't breathe next month, and that's what Jonathan is going through addicted to heroin. Trooper Mark Licklider, or Trooper to Cumberland Barrett, is an EMT. He received a phone call, a call for service, but non responsive mail outside the theaters at the mall. He said, I roll up, the individual is blue, I administer Narcan, and they give him oxygen. He's transported to the Western Maryland Health System, and his life was saved. He said five hours later, a car comes screeching into the gas station at 40. Young man comes running across 40, beating on the duty officer's desk, and said, I need my cell phone. I need my cell phone. That's that young man who died dead five hours ago. The young man needed his cell phone to call his drug dealer. What's it like to be dope sick, sick with heroin? I met a lady in Queen Anne's County. Queen Anne's County is the first county to cross the Bay Bridge. That's Queen Anne's County. I got done speaking to Chamber of Commerce. A lady came up to me, a beautiful blonde haired lady, very successful. She said, I'm 13 years in recovery. I want to thank you for telling me someone addicted to heroin is not a bad person. There's no stigma. They've made a bad choice. She said, I want to share my story with you. She said, I live in Cecil County, Maryland. Every single day I drive from Cecil County to Baltimore City. Through my theft scheme, I'd have $100 to $150 every day. I would go into Walmart, I'd steal, I'd return to goods. I'd go to Lowe's, I'd steal, I'd return to goods, and I was never arrested. She said, I snorted heroin for four months, and I started running. Uh, with two individuals selling large amounts of heroin. I was a driver. It was a Friday, five o'clock, large amount of heroin was ordered up in a motel. Well, I pull up, done it hundreds of times. She said there was a knock at the door, and uh, the, the doors opened, and all she saw was state police, state police. She said a trooper got in front of me, held up his handgun, and said, shut your car off. She said, I gunned it. The trooper shot into the car, the round lost in my ear. It's a very successful lady, 13 years of recovery. He lives on a water canal and has a child, gets married. She said, I said, I could do this, I've done this my whole life. She said, I walked into a 7-Eleven and I was so accessed for my injections, I would not even have touched myself. But I ran in screaming, I've been robbed, I've been robbed. They locked the doors and my nurse grabbed me in a fetal position. She said, I woke up and I was in jail and I called my mom, Mom, where you at? The balls in your court, the balls in my court. She gets done and she goes like this. I said, what are you doing? She said, I can use heroin now. I can use heroin tomorrow. I'm going to be every single day talking about my addiction. How did your addiction start? Prescription opioids. What's it like every single day to wake up? I'm going to quickly walk, quickly walk you through. 75 to 95% of the time, prescription opioids are this. So I'm going to wake up every single day. 
I'm going to get my spoon out, I'm getting my lighter out, and I'm going to inject. I'm going to heat it up, I'm going to liquefy it. If you have anybody in your family you suspect is struggling with an addiction, two things, excessive spoons, excessive lighters. If you have those, you can almost guarantee someone's battling an addiction. Two things will trigger addiction faster than anything. Talk to someone about a heroin addiction or let them spell spoon. Why? Every day, multiple times a day. They're popping that, they're heating that. Wherever there's a vein, they will inject in their body. They will go to the arms, tie off, release. You have to sneak to a bathroom. Imagine something has you so bad, you're sneaking to a bathroom to inject and get high. Anywhere there's a vein, there's a will, there's a way. She woke up that day, she called me. She says, Jimmy Paws, today's the day. Today's the day. I'm going to be an addict. Today's the day I'm going to stick that needle in my neck. And you think that's for a second case? No one wakes up and says, today's the day. Today's the day I'm going to be an addict. It starts with prescription opioids, then it goes to heroin. The last place they go to is the hands. It's so painful and it's so visible. I'm going to leave you with this. What would be doing a little bit different if? In 2017, the Western Maryland Health System treated 417 overdoses. When you leave here, you'll see the emergency room. 417 people walked through those emergency room doors, or transported in and treated for an overdose. In Allegheny County, in the last two years, we've had over 100 fatal overdoses in the last two years. Ladies and gentlemen, Allegheny County was established Christmas Day, 1789. We've been in existence for nearly 230 years. In 230 years, we haven't had 100 homicides. In 230 years, what we'll be doing a little bit different. Exactly what we're doing today. Allegheny County is united, Cumberland City is united, and Frostburg City is united. Mr. Sophie. All right, well, um, Major Piles, thank you very much. And I, I don't think uh, we need to go too far into uh, any more discussion about do we have a problem uh, with opioids. But we'll start here on the um, the CDC map, okay, so this is for out of every 100 people, um, there are 127.2 um, prescriptions in Allegheny County, so more than a one-to-one -one ratio. So the average person walking around maybe has more than one uh, prescription that they're working with. Now that bright red, that is not a good sign. Um, you can see we have a Western Maryland problem. Um, our firm, the Full Law Group, we're in Washington County, and we were talking about um, before we came up here today, we have really a similar problem going on, uh, slightly different than Allegheny County in a number of ways, but we are all united really in this fight against uh, the opioids. Allegheny County comes in really at the top of this list, and so it is, it is beyond any argument or any discussion that we have a major major opioid problem here in Western Maryland. And as I think everyone knows, uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to see the 60 Minutes piece on what's going on across our nation uh, with the opioid issue and the overdoses, um, you really should take a look at that. We, we have a massive problem and uh, we need to do something about it. Um, just to go a little further into that, it's now the leading cause of death for those under 50. Um, and I did a little reading uh, your local paper, and you know, I saw the one funeral director said this is like Vietnam. We're burying young people all the time. Um, this is just something that we haven't seen. Um, you know, you guys in 230 years haven't had the number of deaths that you're dealing with now, and it's certainly a massive financial drain, uh, really across the board, um, for uh, local municipalities, uh, cities, and counties here. Now, why are we here? Why are attorneys involved in this? Um, and that's been, that's been a question really across the country. Why is there a need for attorneys to get involved? Right now, there is ongoing litigation in Cleveland, Ohio. It's multi-district litigation, which has its center in Cleveland. Um, Ohio has been one of the hardest hit areas. Um, and, and that's where hundreds of cases have basically been consolidated for pretrial discovery, okay? Um, 
but, but what are attorneys doing? Why can't they uh, fix this problem through lawmakers or, or, or other features? Um, well, the issue becomes um, that we've had manufacturers and distributors, you see the three here, McKesson, uh, Cardinal, Amerisource, Bergen. Uh, these companies have annual revenues of about $400 billion. And what they figured out is that um, they can make more money by violating federal law and sending more opioid prescriptions than is allowed, um, and they'll just pay the $200 million fine. Because when your revenues are $400 billion, shocking to us, but $200 million doesn't really hit your pocket that hard. Um, these companies, as set up under federal law, were required to serve as gatekeepers. So they were to raise their hand and say, whoa, there are too many opioid prescriptions going to this locale or that locale. Some of these small towns like we have here or in West Virginia, uh, I mean, I think the one was there are 5,000 residents in this little town in West Virginia, and they're getting like a million pills per month. It's just, it's beyond belief, okay? But these companies were required under federal law to raise a red flag if there were any suspicious um, orders. They knew that this was their requirement, but they have valued profits over people. And so they have chose to ignore those. They've been fined. The DEA has investigated them, um, but largely uh, there, there's been fines, but, but this hasn't stopped our problem. They've continued to be pumped into our communities. Um, in addition, um, they, they've also really promoted the fact that opioids are the solutions, right? Uh, if you take this pill, it will make your pain go away. I know Bruce and I, a large part of our practice is dealing with people who have been injured, okay? Um, workers' comp, personal injury, and my clients, you know, go in, have a back surgery, they're prescribed this medication, told this is gonna fix all your problems, and then a couple years down the road, they have an addiction that they cannot get away from. And part of that is the marketing has been to show that, hey, these are, these are safe options. Uh, this will um, take away your pain, and um, instead it's created a horrible problem. That's how you go down the path of, of, of heroin. Um, so already talked about, they've paid the fines. They've paid $200 million while they're making $400 billion. Meanwhile, all the counties, all the uh, local you know, municipalities, city of Cumberland, city of Frostburg, um, we are left to take on all the issues uh, that are in response to the fact that we have so many people walking around addicted to the opioids and, and just all the issues that that brings um, with it. Um, so the suit that uh, is going to be filed on behalf of the city uh, of Frostburg, uh, City of Cumberland, and Allegheny County, um, which should be ready to go in the next 30 to 45 days, okay, is against the drug manufacturers and the distributors because they have failed in their obligation. They have sent far too many pills into our communities all across the nation, and they push these as, as basically safe alternatives. Um, so that's the basis of the suit. Uh, Bruce and I, our firm, uh, is working with a group of other firms. Uh, the leaders are Levin Papantonio uh, out of Florida and Baron and Bud, who has uh, offices really across the entire nation. There's a group of other firms uh, associated um, with that group as well. These are firms that this is what they do. They handle multi-district litigation. They handle um, suits that are filed across the country um, for these kind of issues. This is really their uh, area of expertise, and um, they were there even uh, on the tobacco litigation in the 90s, uh, which everyone said couldn't be won, and um, they were very successful there. This is the same group that's, that's taking up um, this suit. Fred Levin of Levin Papantonio uh, was really the founder there, and uh, Levin Papantonio has kind of been a pioneer in this area 
and that's the group that you guys are with. They now represent over, well over 300 clients. They filed about 50% of the first claims. Um, they are in five of the 22 positions of leadership there in Cleveland. Um, so it, you, we're gonna file the suit. The suit will then be moved to the multi-district litigation in Ohio, um, where there was a hope um, that it would be resolved quickly uh, without need for litigation, but as we'll get to later, that, that really hasn't been the case. So you guys, the city of Frostburg, city of Cumberland and Allegheny County, you've come together um, in a really impressive way uh, to bring this action and to really um, bring some change uh, for what's going on here all across the county and, and in the city of Cumberland and the city of Frostburg. So I'm sure everybody wants to know, all right, lawyers are involved, well, they're gonna have to be paid. Yes, that is true, uh, lawyers will be paid, but there is no taxpayer expense. This is a contingent fee contract. So um, any recovery that the attorneys have only come out of proceeds of either a settlement or a verdict. Um, and the expenses um, also are, are set and have to be approved by the court. Um, so there is no money that needs to be fronted by um, the county or the city or any of the taxpayers. Uh, so it's really a great option. Um, now you may say, hey, we have these great county attorneys and they have been absolutely wonderful to work with. We have great uh, city attorneys. Shouldn't they be able to file this suit? Well, uh, you're going to need millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, to be able to do that. Now the nice thing with our group is um, they have over 300 clients. They can spread that cost. They already have experts lined up. Uh, across the country. They already have DEA agents who are going to serve as their testifying experts. Um, so no, we should not expect any local counsel uh, to, to handle this case. You need teams and teams and teams of lawyers and you're going to need millions of dollars ultimately uh, to be able to resolve this. Um, so the question is what happens uh, when you get the money from a verdict or settlement? Well our group is very focused on a damages model that not only looks back, but also looks forward. Clearly, we've had issues in the past, and um, we've heard about that, but there are going to be issues into the future, and how do we fix that? It's not just throw money at the problem. We need education, we need treatment, we need counseling, we're gonna need facilities, we gotta help out with our police, our EMS, uh, first responders, um, there's just so many things that are gonna to need to go into it. So it's not just looking back, but it's looking forward. And so the damages um, that we would hope to recover in the suit would not just um, put a Band-Aid on the problem, but would be looking forward to forecast what are the potential costs that City of Cumberland, City of Frostburg, Allegheny County are gonna to need to incur in the future. And we wanna make sure all of that is covered. Um, and I think we've already answered this. Isn't there, some people would say, well, wait a minute, why are we going after manufacturers and distributors This uh, when heroin's the real problem? Heroin is the result of the opioid epidemic, uh, and that's absolutely clear. Uh, so to then briefly bring you up to date with where things stand, right now this, there's an MDL formed in Cleveland, Ohio. MDL is multi-district litigation. There are a number of similar cases across the country but this is not a class action lawsuit, okay? So not everyone is gonna get the same amount of damages. Each um, client's claim is unique. So um, the city of Cumberland, city of Frostburg, Allegheny County is gonna be different than Washington County or Cecil County or any other county. You're each gonna have your own unique set of circumstances, your own unique set of damages, okay? But for the purposes of trying to resolve this litigation as quickly as possible, all those cases, hundreds and hundreds of cases have been consolidated there in Cleveland for um, pre-trial discovery and kind of to set how the cases are gonna go. We would expect that not this summer, but next summer, the first case would be heard. It would be the city of Cleveland against these manufacturers and distributors. Our, the team that we're working with would likely try that case um, and they could be uh, really one to set an absolute precedent uh, for how this is going to go. 
The matter is presided over by a uh, Harvard graduate, Judge Polster. He's a very brilliant man. He has uh, experience in these areas, and he was hopeful that this would all resolve by now. But being hopeful and being realistic, I think, um, are two different things. We know now that there's not going to be a settlement. That time has already passed. Now uh, litigation is ready to begin. It's going to kick off here shortly with um, an, basically allowing discovery on both sides. So both the plaintiffs and defendants will be able to go retrieve any and every document and data point um, necessary to, uh, to bring this case. So it's going to be probably about a year plus of just document production and discovery before we get into litigation. Then we'll have the first case. That verdict will largely set what maybe the other claims are worth, and that could lead to settlement, um, but you just never know. As I discussed, our team has five of the 22 leadership roles, and they represent, uh, last check, I think it was 334 clients. Um, so um, they are going to dictate the way this litigation heads. Um, but of course, they serve all the clients. So um, each client would have to consent to any type of settlement, and, and ultimately each client could try their case in their home state, and each client would have their own separate set of damages and forecast of future damages. Um, so I, I've already talked about the, the, we're now into litigation. The first case is gonna be probably the end of next year, um, and really the negotiation uh, piece is over, and now it's gonna be uh, a pretty intense battle. I don't know if you saw in the news recently, but um, Attorney General Sessions um, and the Department of Justice have signed on in favor of the plaintiffs. So they have signed on um, against the opioid manufacturers and distributors to say yes, what the opioid manufacturers and distributors did was wrong, and yes, the plaintiffs, the city of Cumberland, uh, city of Frostburg, and Allegheny County, they have a legitimate claim and um, the the Department of Justice won't actually join in the suit, but they have filed a statement saying, we are on the side of the plaintiffs. We believe they have been wronged. We believe the defendants were wrong. Um, so things are moving very, very quickly, um, but I uh, really believe um, that you guys are in a great spot. You know, Bruce and I, we are uh, Hagerstown boys, I would call us. Uh, we're Western Maryland guys. Um, we, we care very much about uh, what's gonna happen in this litigation. And um, we really believe that the, the group that we're working with will get uh, City of Cumberland, City of Frostburg, and Allegheny County absolute best result possible. Um, and we, we just hope all the best um, because we have a horrible problem. It's not going to go away. And uh, we're taking it head on. And um, we're, we're really happy that you guys have, have chosen to allow us to partner with. Thank you, AJ, and thank you, Jimmy, for those comments. Uh, you know, I think they're both sobering words as to the impact of the community, the damages that are uh, that are already there and felt, and then the future to uh, to look ahead to this litigation. Uh, I want to turn it over now to uh, the president of the county commissioners, Jake Shade, for some remarks and some introductions. Jake. Good evening. I uh, hope everyone's far more aware than they were um, about an hour ago about why this lawsuit needs to go forward. Um, I'm confident that we're going to be successful, and, and it's great that we have Bruce and AJ and, and a competent team of attorneys based throughout the country. You know, it, it, it's not just that, that McKesson and Cardinal Health and Marister Spurgeon that they made billions of dollars by pumping these pills into places like our our, our communities, but they knowingly and willfully violated any sort of responsibility they had to this country and, and people like us. And so it, it, it's not just the cost of dollars and cents to the, uh, to the people affected, but to local governments. And, um, and, and that's what this suit is about, recouping some of that money because someone got rich pushing these pills and, and we're going to do our best to, uh, to gain some of that back. So there is, there is a long list of, uh, of folks here that were involved in some way, shape, or form. If you would like to say anything, please just uh, just raise your hand or come on down. First, we have Mr. 
Bill Rudd and Mike Cohen just wave to be recognized good enough. We have law enforcement here tonight, uh, Lieutenant Maryland State Police H.B. Marks, Sheriff Craig Robertson, Chief Charlie Hennett, and Chief of Frostburg Royce Dowdy. Welcome. We have uh, Cumberland Mayor Brian Grimm, Councilman Roxione, Councilman Eugene Frazier, and their City Administrator Jeff Rhodes. Okay. City of Frostburg, we have Mayor Bob Flanagan, uh, Commissioners Woody Getz, Bob Mackey, and uh, Administrator Kirby. We have Christine Delaney from the uh, Allegheny County Behavioral Health and Prevention Promotion. Well, someone. Okay. We also have our Register of Wills, Mary Beth Perlazzi. Tammy Fraley, the Allegheny County Board of Ed. And our state's attorney, Mr. Michael Twig. Again, thank you all for coming out tonight. I'm, I'm confident that, that someday we're going to be looking back on tonight when, uh, and, and when we have a successful verdict. So thank you all. This is the start of something good. Thank you very much. As, uh, as the uh, Commissioner Shade had mentioned, any elected officials that want to say anything, uh, we, I do want to say uh, we are uh, streaming via the internet or, or recording, and of course we have our friends in the media here. Uh, so I know AJ and Jimmy are going to stick around afterwards for, for a chat with Heather, I'm sure. But is there any county um, commissioners, uh, officials you want to, uh, you have a few words or we'll just leave it at that? Okay. Wow, there we go. All right, well, thank you all so much for coming out. Uh, have a great rest of the evening.